Have you ever had a blood test and found out you are low on vitamin D? And even when you take vitamin D, your levels just don't go up or it feels like they're not really helping. It's actually more common than you might think. And there are just two main reasons for it. Let's get started. Why do humans need sunlight? Because low vitamin D levels aren't just linked to osteoporosis. They are also connected to falls, infection, heart disease, diabetes, depression, dementia, and even cancer risk. But many of you might find that even if you take vitamin D, your blood levels don't really budge. The first reason could be a magnesium deficiency. If you look at how our bodies make vitamin D, you will understand why. The enzymes that metabolize vitamin D are found in the liver and kidneys. But here's the kicker. These enzymes are magnesium-dependent enzymes. Not only that, but magnesium also controls the function of vitamin D receptors. This means if you're short on magnesium, your body cannot properly absorb vitamin D, leading to problems with metabolism. So, no matter how much sun you get or how much vitamin D you take, your blood levels might not increase. In fact, studies have shown that magnesium supplementation increased low vitamin D levels and normalized high vitamin D levels. Essentially, magnesium helps optimize your body's vitamin D levels. The second reason is due to VDR polymorphism, which refer to variation in the vitamin D receptors. There are four main types of this. Because of these VDR genetic variation, some people see their vitamin D levels shoot up quickly even with a small dose, while others take high dosage and see no changes at all. Of course, having a VDR gene variation doesn't automatically mean health problems, but it can play a significant role in vitamin D's physiological function and development of various diseases. While these VDR polymorphism definitely have a genetic component, epigenetics suggests that things like diet, sun exposure, and lifestyle habit can turn on or turn off the switch of this genetic variation. Vitamin D is undeniably important, right? And nearly 41% of Americans are reported to have deficiency. I was actually quite surprised after my recent blood test uh, because my level came back as insufficient and it was a bit of a shock. Many of my patients who seems perfectly fine also have insufficient vitamin D or level um, hovering around 30. So I highly recommend you get yours checked too. To make matters worse, um, there's also statistically the significant number of people who are vitamin D deficient also lack magnesium. 48% of Americans are magnesium deficient, and some study even reported up to 60%. In reality, most of my patients don't take magnesium supplementation, and neither do I. First, according to NIH, the RDA for vitamin D is a 600 IU, and the upper limit is 4000 IU. When you look at the vitamin D blood levels, the normal range is quite broad from about 30 to 100. However, it's generally known that taking 600 to 800 IU daily makes it hard to even reach 20. To raise blood level to around 30, it's advised to take about 2000 IU daily to effectively increase the level without worrying about the side effect. Here's a common question I get from my patient. Most vitamin D supplements are 5000 IU or even 10,000 IU, and is it okay to take that much? And this is because I often recommend Core K2 plus D3, which is a 5,000 IU. Generally, a dose of 5,000 IU is considered fine if your blood level are below 30, and if you have a darker skin or limited sun exposure, uh, if you're obese, um, if you have osteoporosis or bone disease, and if you're taking it as a secondary treatment for autoimmune disease. When choosing vitamin D, it's best to go for animal-derived vitamin D, as it has a better bioability and can raise blood level more effectively. Simply put, buy D3, not D2. Also make sure to take it with the vitamin K2, which helps reduce vitamin D's side effect. And definitely check your magnesium intake. There are many types of magnesium, but glycinate is generally considered the best. You can take 200 to 400 milligram once a day. 
So to summarize, vitamin D 2000 IU or more and magnesium glycinate 200, uh, 400 milligram. This is definitely not an ad. You can just take the dosage information and formulation and get any brand you like. I will use a product I made as an example to explain. When taking magnesium, the ratio with calcium is also important. That's because calcium and magnesium have antagonistic effect in the body. This means if one is too high, the other action can be inhibited or absorption rate can decrease. It used to be a 2 to 1 calcium to magnesium ratio, but the current trend is closer to 1 to 1. This is because modern people tend to have excess calcium and is insufficient magnesium. So if we compare with this product, the combination is a 0.84 to 1. So it's a little less calcium, so it doesn't interfere with uh, magnesium absorption. D3 and K2 precisely guide calcium metabolism and magnesium support vitamin D activation. So since my level is currently 20, I'll be taking each one pill a day for three months. After three months, I will get another blood test and share the re result with you. If my level comes back to um, 40 to 60, I might switch to taking it every other day, but I will let you know what I decide in three months. If today's video was helpful, please give a like and remember, health is well, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean making health easy for you. See you next time.